Well, praise God, praise God. Greetings to you in listening land today. My, what a privilege. The Lord has granted us to come your way to tell you the good news that Jesus loves you. Amen. Well, praise God. Sorry, running a little bit behind time today, but it's so good to be here with you again to fellowship around the word of God to see what the spirit of God would say to us this evening on this evening that we've never seen before in this day that we've never experienced before that the goodness of God and the word of God is here for us at this time in our lives. And it's a blessing and an honor to be here, to be able to hear what God is saying to us today. Amen. So praise God. This is Ascension of Revivals and House of Prayer, Mother Tucker Ministries, located in Tulsa, Oklahoma, 4505 West 55th Place in Tulsa. Sunday school is happening every Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Amen. Appreciate pastors, um, mom and dad, Brian, Elder Rodney, Elder Apollos, and appreciate anyone who does anything regarding Sunday school and plugging into such a powerful time of study in the Word of God. I love the fact that there can be questions asked um, um, during the time or there can be com uh, commentaries made during the time or to see what you're getting out of the lesson. And that's how we learn. Amen. We learn by we learn by sharing. We learn by talking about. We learn by teaching. Amen. We learn by sharing what we get out of something with others. That's why these things of Bible study and um, group studies and things of that nature are very powerful because you're repeating things and you're you're repeating what you're hearing in your spirit and you're sharing what you're hearing in your spirit and then it allows to get into your spirit so that you can begin to produce the fruit of the word of God as well. So it's good to, to, to be in Sunday school, to be in times where you can share the word of God and where you can rehearse what you've learned. Amen. That's how we grow. That's how we learn. Amen. I always say repetition is a mother of learning. I didn't make it up, but somebody else did, but it is a, the way we learn repetition. So you hear it, you repeat it, you do it, then you learn it. Amen. It doesn't come just by hearing. The word of God says the faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But we don't just listen to the word of God without intending to do the word of God. Amen. I'm not getting into the message right now, but praise God. We listen to do the word of God. We don't, we're not just hearers only. Amen. Sometimes we can just look for the next big thing or the next great word. You know, I just want to hear the next thing that God is saying. I just want to hear what God is saying, the new thing, the new thing, the new thing. Well, get the old thing. You know, so you got to get the, go back and do the old thing. Do the, the, the true things of repentance and things that, that show that our hearts are pure towards God and things that we can do in our actions that cause us to implement what God wants to, us to experience in our lives and not just being, you know, uh, taking it in, taking it in, taking it in. Amen. There's a, there's fruit that comes as a result of hearing the word of God and doing the word of God. And the thing about it is that if we meditate on the word of God, if we let the word of God get in our spirits and all, there is an observing to do as Joshua 1 and 8 talks about. If we meditate on this word and don't allow it to depart out of our, out of our hearts and all, we will then make our way prosperous and then we will have good success. So there's something that comes of hearing the word, meditating on the word of God, doing the word of God. It produces results in our lives beyond the action of doing the word. Amen. Well, that is not my message, but that's in the word of encouragement for us. Amen. Um, to be encouraged in what we're doing, you know, in the things of God. Well, praise God. Amen. Well, Sunday school happening Sunday morning, 10 a.m., Amen. Morning worship at 1130 a.m. Glory to God. Uh, the spirit of God is moving mightily in the services and we're grateful for what God is doing by his spirit on a consistent basis. He is faithful. We find out that he shows up when we show up, <laughs> you know, and we show up to give him praise. We show up to give him glory. We show up to give him honor. He's there. In our midst, and he's going to do great and mighty things. So that's what's happening in the services. Amen. Um, uh, 11.30 Sunday mornings, food ministry is happening on Thursday evenings uh, from 7 to 8.30. And then the immediately following services on Sunday evenings. Uh, we appreciate uh, Brother Floyd White that's been consistently um, 
being there with us on a Sunday evening, sharing the word of God and just blessing, being a blessing to the people um, that come on Sunday evenings as well. So it's a wonderful time to, again, just a refreshing. Y'all, y'all know we dealing with stuff in this world and things that we need to be encouraged on a consistent basis as we just uh, been talking about in the last few weeks, be encouraged. Amen. So plugging in the things that encourage our souls and lift our spirits. And that's what God's word does when we spend time with him in the scriptures and in fellowship, his word blesses our lives. Amen. Well, praise God. Again, God bless you for being with us this evening. Amen. God bless you, Sister Diana. God bless you, woman of God. Appreciate you. Amen. I just love seeing your name there. It's just such, so encouraging as well. And uh, Sister Charlotte Johnson, I'm not sure if you're still on, but God bless you. Amen. But we're going to get into the word of God as others come in as well. I'm, I felt the spirit of God leading me into an area of study, and, and we're going to get into it this evening. I, I'm, I'm hesitant to jump into it because I don't want there to be a misconception of the message. You know, I know some people will get bent out of shape when you talk about uh, success, when you talk about wealth, when you talk about prosperity. Oh, that's prosperity gospel. Well, we want to talk about it. We're going to talk about it tonight, and we're going to dive into this subject that we're calling the wealthy place, the wealthy place. So we're going to look at Psalm 66 and verse 12. We're going to start with this passage of scripture, and like I said, we're going to um, just Work this out in the spirit of God and allow the spirit of God to get us to a place that he wants us to be in him. Amen. So glory to God. Psalm 66, 12. It reads, I'm reading in the King James Version. It says, thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place. Amen. I just want to read that again. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us into a wealthy place. I just want that to sink in. I'm going to read it again. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us out into a a wealthy place. May God have blessing to the reading and to the hearing of his word. Let's pray and then we'll get more into this word of God. Father, right now, thank you for this time together this evening. Father, I pray right now that your word is stirred in our spirits, that your word is stirred in our hearts. Thank you, Father, that these airways are being captured right now with your anointing, causing burdens to be removed and yokes to be destroyed. Oh, God, thank you right now that your word is flowing, flowing freely through my heart, through my mind. You are thinking through my mind, speaking through my vocal cords, and that it's falling on good ground in Jesus' name. And we're bringing forth fruit in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, praise God. Amen. And read this scripture again in Psalm 66, 12. Thou hast brought, thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but thou broughtest us out into a wealthy place. Amen. I, I, I just want us to catch this fact of that God wants our lives to be blessed. He wants our lives to be blessed. He wants us to be blessed. And these are things that we have to talk about. We have to remind ourselves about. I'm saying lately, I don't know, I got a new fire in me, a new stir in me. I understand that the enemy don't play fair. You know, you try to accommodate and you try to, okay, I won't bother you on that. If you don't bother me on this over here and all that, the enemy don't play fair. I mean, you can't make a deal with the devil. You know, you can't make a negotiation with the devil because he's a liar. The devil is a liar. So the enemy has deceived many into thinking that certain areas and certain ways of being are holier than other areas. That other places of being are more acceptable than other areas. And when it comes to the things of God, and now if you are living a certain way, then you must be doing something wrong. 
You know, if you got this going and that going on, then you must be doing something that you shouldn't be doing if you're living that kind of life. If you're experiencing prosperity, if you're experiencing blessings, if you're experiencing things of niceness in your life, you must be doing something wrong. Well, let's just defunct that in the name of Jesus. Let's just get that out of our spirits in the name of Jesus because what we're doing is that we're fighting with the blessings of God. We're fighting with what God wants to do in our lives if we speak against it on somebody else's life. Oh, look at the car they driving. Oh, they, oh, they must be doing something wrong. Oh, look at how they living. Oh, they must be doing something. You know, we, we, we negate blessings in our own lives when we talk about blessings on somebody else's life. You don't know the story. Was it so? You don't know the oil. You don't know the cost of the oil. You don't know what somebody has been through. You don't know what their experience has been to get what they have. You don't know how they prayed. You don't know how they stood, how they fasted, how they believed God for change for the miracle. You don't know the backstory. So before you put your mouth on it, check yourself as Mother Tucker would often say, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Amen. We need to examine ourselves to make sure that we're, we're staying in the faith. We want to be in the faith. Amen. We don't want to just be in something where we're just grabbing a hold of and, and running with, and it doesn't mean anything to God. We want to stay in the faith of what we believe when it comes to the things of God and what God wants us to experience in our lives. This is why we have to talk about it because we speak what we believe. The scripture said we believe and therefore we speak. Amen. You got to talk about some stuff in order to see some things manifest in your life. You got to talk up on some things to see it show up in your life. If you want healing, you got to talk about healing. You got to declare you are the healed of the Lord. You got to declare it over your body. You got to declare it because that's how we live. That's how we live through declaring, through speaking the word of God over our lives. This is how we live. So we have to be reminded of this because the enemy, he's going around as a roaring lion seeking who he can devour. Devour is not a nice thing. Devour is destroy, as the scriptures say. He comes to kill, steal, and to destroy. So we got to be on alert. I'm just in this vein right now for the last few weeks. Last, if you ain't heard it, you hearing it again now. That we got to be alert about what the enemy is trying to do and be on point with what God wants to do in, 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 in defense of what the enemy is trying to do. The word of God is our defense. Amen. The word of God is our defense. So when things are coming at us, we got to rise up in the word of God. We have to step up our faith in the word of God. We got to step up what we know about the word of God. That's what we do in response to things happening. Amen. Things, when things come at us, we rise up into the word of God. God, amen. So if lack is all around you, you got to get some prosperity scriptures going, amen. Yeah, the beloved, I wish you up all things that thou prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers, amen. You got to get those scriptures going in you. You got to get it going in you and all around you that he supplies all of your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus, amen, that he is not a God of lack, but he's a God of abundance, amen. These are things that we have to remind ourselves about, amen, because there is a wealthy place for us, amen. There is a wealthy place for us. Now, this is something that Mother Tucker, Mother Tucker believed that God wanted us blessed. God wanted her, she believed God wanted her blessed first. She believed that thing. You know, she would talk about living in a mansion. She would talk about these things and just talk about it. Sometimes we would be like, oh, mama, oh, mama. But before you know it, she, she was living in a mansion. Amen. She wanted God's goodness to be seen in her life. And she believed that God's goodness was to be seen. Did you ever see her dress? 
Did you ever see the way she looked when she went to service, when she went to church? Mama, Mama's like, we're going to show the goodness of God. We're going to show the goodness of God in the way we dress, in the way we live. This is what we're to do. Amen. And I'm going to tell you, she believed in one God wanting us blessed so much. And there was sometimes it was painful to be at services when when these ideas would come or when these opportunities. And, and those of you who know, you know, say if you know, you know, these opportunities would come up where someone would give an opportunity to 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 open a business or, or do an income opportunity and all that. She believed that God wanted us blessed, that God wanted us to be wealthy, that God wanted us to be prosperous. She believed it so much till she would take time out of service to talk about opportunities, to talk about ways that we can put our hands to something, to be a blessing to others. Amen. Blessed to be a blessing. I see that ambassador again. Blessed. To, amen. That was her thing. Her if, her if she had a mantra, it was about being a blessing to others, encouraging others to do better. Amen. The scripture that says the poor you'll have with you always, she would always add in there. No, Pastor Regina and her uh, God caught that statement that it doesn't have to be the same ones. That you can be in a situation right now, but you don't have to be in that situation next year, this time. That things can change if we believe the word of God and put some things in place that activate the word of God on the place of wealth, the blessing that God wants to be seen in our lives. Amen. He wants us blessed. We just need to lock into that because we want to block it. We just want to block it. Well, it don't really mean financial. Well, it don't really mean material. Well, it don't. Can we just not do that? Can we not take away from the scriptures, can we just make it and also instead of it doesn't mean that, but let it be and also because it does mean uh, material. It does mean blessings external. But it does mean that. Amen. It also has the deeper meaning of spiritual blessing in it. Amen. Beloved, I wish of all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Think about that. Think about that. We kind of get caught up in it. Beloved, I wish you all things in prosper, prosper, and be in hell. Amen. But it's even as your soul prospers. So if we get into this thing of prospering our souls, you're going to get into an area of prospering on the material side. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. This is a part of the lifestyle that we are able to embrace. Amen. So this scripture that we're looking at in Psalm 66, 12, you cause men to ride on us. You you cause men. You meaning that we we were we were allowed to experience difficulties. Amen. We were allowed to experience things that were not pleasant. Mm -hmm. We were allowed to experience things that did not feel good. We were allowed to experience things that did not go our way. We were allowed to experience behaviors from other people that might have been uh, detrimental to us. We were allowed. He said, you have caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water. Now, see, that part, oh, we love the suffering saints, <laughs> We we down for the suffering. Oh, we down for that because we know we got to suffer for the Lord. We got to suffer 
for Christ. We got to suffer. If you suffer with him, you're going to reign with him. So we're down for the suffering. We ain't got no problem with the suffering, trials and tribulations and, and all. We don't have any problem with those things. We can accept that. Jesus said in this world, you're going to have trials. You're going to have to, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. Amen. So we already down for the suffering, if you will. Yo, we got that down pat. I'm suffering for the Lord. Sickness in our body. Oh, I'm just suffering for the Lord. When the Lord sees fit, he'll heal me. Yes, I know I'm dealing in lack right now, but when the Lord sees fit, he's going to supply that need. When the Lord sees fit, because I'm suffering for him. I'm suffering doing this will in this suffering life that I'm living. I'm just suffering. Oh, I'm suffering. Woe is me. I'm suffering. No, so we're down for the suffering. And again, we understand it. And especially as a certain caliber of people, we really understand suffering. There's not an, uh, uh, there's not a, 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 a suffering that we're not aware of, if you will. Amen. And the scriptures tell us that, that God is not, uh, he's not going to allow us to be tempted above that which we're able to bear. But it's common. The temptations are common. The suffering, they're common. They're common. So we can understand that. And we, you get up and talk about suffering. You ain't nobody going to, you ain't got no issue with nobody on suffering because we suffering. Amen. Glory to God. But when it talks about this next part, this is what the scripture says. But thou broughtest us out, the King James Version, broughtest us out into a wealthy place into a wealthy place. I don't know if you're looking at that in your scriptures, and I would encourage you to look at it in your Bible, to look at it in your version of Psalm 66, 12. But thou broughtest us out into a wealthy place. Now, other translations are, are going to say it differently, but it's still going to represent abundance it's going to represent a place of overflowing. It's going to represent a place of expansion. Amen. Amen. So so this whole thing of just being uh, barely getting by, you know, of, of just barely enough for you and your, your four and no more, you know, for, for us to allow God to get us into our wealthy place. That's what I just want to encourage us in right now, to allow God, because this says he brought us. Uh, he, he brought us into the wealthy place. He does it. Amen. He does it by his spirit. He does it. Because I'm not talking about you getting out there and you just um, effort, 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 effort. Let me just do everything, do everything, do everything, do everything. And let me just try to get this and try to get this and try to get this. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about us understanding that God wants to get us to our wealthy place, your wealthy place, my wealthy place. And that place, again, we recognize, this is why I'm, I'm being very careful here. I'm not limiting it to the financial blessing. I'm not limiting it, limiting it to the material side. I'm not limiting it to those elements. What I'm saying is, and also, amen. I want to get serious with that. It's and also your financial and also your material blessing and also your home, and also your relationships, and also your career, and also your spiritual walk with God, and also your uh, family situation, and also, amen. We don't have to tit for tat God. God, if you give me this, then I'll give you that. You know, God, if you do this for me, then I'll do that for you. God, if you open this door, then I'll close this door. We don't have to tit protect God. We do that in, in our human relationships and things. We, we make deals. If you do this, I'll do that. If you do, but we don't do that with God. God is not a tip or tap God. He's, he's not out trying to make a deal with you about how you obey him. Amen. He's not trying to make a deal with you. We simply obey him. 
Amen. As we talked about, um, even Sunday, the, the flow was obedience, you know, obeying God and allowing the spirit of God to move through us, to get through us what he wants to get through us. Amen. As you say, if it gets through you, it's going to stick to you. Amen. If you can flow with the things of God, then it's going to stick to you. You're going to receive something from what you're flowing with. Amen. And the ultimate goal, of course, we're, we, we want to, the, the scriptures say in Proverbs that, that, that blessings enhance the life of the godly. Amen. We, we are, our lives are enhanced by blessings. Our lives are enhanced by prosperity. Our lives are enhanced by it. We're not destroyed by it. Not, 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 not believers. Not, not those of us who understand the things of God. Those of us who, who are sober minded. We're not destroyed by prosperity. It enhances our lives so that we are able to be a blessing. Amen. To be a blessing. Amen. To someone else, to be a blessing. Someone else in need, to be a blessing to those who are less than or less fortunate, to be a blessing. Amen. You, you can't give what you don't have. And you need to have. Amen. So your wealthy place that God is bringing you to is something that you need to expect and anticipate in his goodness. Because he's good. Amen. He's not just going to allow you to go through the struggle, through the trouble, through the dirt, through the pain, through the turmoil without having something better for you on the other side of that. And that's your wealthy place that you want to live in. Amen. Now let's just talk about that for a moment. This place of, of, of overflowing, this place of Running over in, in Psalm 23, 5, uh, my cup runs over. My cup runs over. Interesting too, in Psalm 23, 5, that that word is a similar word to that wealthy place word that we see. Psalm 23, 5, thou prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemy. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. My cup runneth over. If you think about a cup running over, if you put the uh, cup underneath the sink or faucet and you just let the water pour into it and it just starts running over or you're pouring into a cup and it just starts running over. Now we can think, oh, that's just wasteful. You know, just stop. You don't need to keep doing that. It's running over. Stop. You know, but God is like, I have so much more than what you are seeing Right now, I can overflow and cause the overflow to overflow and still not run out of what's flowing in the overflow. He's got that much abundance available. My cup runs over. It runs over with goodness. It runs over with joy. It runs over with blessing. It runs over with goodness. It runs over over. It just keeps running over. Amen. The perpetual running over. Amen. These are things that we want to get into the place. This, uh, this is what I mean by your wealthy place. Get into that place where you see the goodness of God all around you. Get into that place in the spirit where you see the goodness of God all around you. Where you see, this is this is your wealthy place. Get into that place in your spirit where you see the goodness of God all around you. Where you see his provision showing up from the north, south, east, and the west. It's just showing up. It's just showing up. Get into that place where you see healing flowing 
through your body, that you see it per, per, permeating every part of your being. Get into that wealthy place in your spirit. You got to get there in your spirit first. You got to get there in your spirit first. Let, let God move you there. Let him move you there in the spirit where you can begin to see around you his goodness. Amen. Where you can see around you his provision. Hallelujah. Where you can see around you healing. Where you can see it around you. Because sometimes you need to see it first in the spirit. The woman with the issue of blood, she said to herself, if I can touch, then I will be. Amen. If you can see it, then you can receive it. If you can see it, begin to see it in your wealthy place. Begin to see it. Hey, you don't have to wait till it looks like it on the outside to be in your wealthy place. Oh my goodness, that's some liberty right there. You don't have to wait till it looks like it on the outside for you to be in your wealthy place. You know what that looks like for you and your family. You know what that looks like for what, what you need to happen in your life. You know what that looks like. So you don't have to wait for the external to take place before you begin to see it on the inside of you by the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. This is how we manifest God's goodness in our lives when we believe what he said. Amen. And Mark, it says, Mark 11, it talks about how if we pray, we'll have it if we believe that we receive it. Well, what does that mean to believe that you receive it? That means start acting like you have it. Amen. Start acting like it's in your possession. Start acting like you are healed. Start acting like it's different than what it was. Then you're operating in a co concordance with what you say you believe. So to get into your wealthy place, letting God bring you into your wealthy place, he wants us to see what he's doing, to see his goodness. Because isn't it a true fact that his goodness is around us? It's just that when we open up our natural eyes, sometimes we can see the bills. You know, we see the gas bill due, the light bill due, the car note due, the, we see the raggedy shoes over there, we see the door that need to be fixed over there. We see some things that don't necessarily look like the abundant and the opulent provision of God. That's why you got to get it in your spirit. We got to get it in our spirit where we see it in our spirit, we all have a wealthy place. <laughs> we, we, we all have it. I, I know that just seems so preposterous. No, I, I don't have a, a wealthy. Yes, yes. You have a wealthy place. You have a wealthy place. You have a wealthy place. I have, we all have a wealthy place. Amen. And it might look differently. Yours might look differently than mine. Amen. It might look differently. It doesn't matter. The point is that we all have a wealthy place. So we want to renew our mind to that wealthy place. Just renew our mind to it. Amen. Begin to really see it. It's, it's challenging to see something new when you've been stuck in something old for so long. If all you've ever seen is what you've seen, it's hard to see something beyond what you've always seen. So that's why you got to get out of the natural and you got to tap into the spirit of God. You got to tap into what he's wanting to do in our lives because there is a place that he wants you to be. There's a place that he wants you 
to go. There's a place that he wants you to live. And again, I'm not just talking about material. I'm talking about spiritually, the way we present ourselves, the way we live our lives. There is a place that he wants us to be in how we present ourselves. We can't go around being woe is me all the time. Woe is me. The dog bit me. Woe is me. I fell. Woe is me. They never did me right. Woe is me. We can't be there all the time. You know, we understand we go through things again. We suffer. We go through things and all that. But God wants us to live from our wealthy place. I don't know if you're hearing what the Spirit is saying this evening, but he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying this evening, that there's a place that we are to live from, which is what he's wanting us to get right now, that there's a wealthy place that we are to live from. You know, you can do better in life when you know you got some money in your bank account. When you know there's money in your bank account, don't you just kind of, you know, you kind of walk a little bit different. You know, your head ain't necessarily facing the ground all the time. You holding your head up just a little bit. I'm not saying nothing about pride. It's not about pride. It's about confidence in our God. It's about confidence in his ability to provide for his own. It's about confidence in knowing that he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we could ask or think. This is the God we serve. This is the God that we love. And this is the God that loves us. Amen. It is the Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. That's what the word of God says. It's his pleasure to give you the kingdom to give you abundance, to give you peace, to give you hope, to give you prosperity, to give you what you need in abundance, overflowing. So God wants us to live from that place of wealthy, live from that place of having more than enough. Live from that place of knowing that every need we ever had will have is supplied. That we have been saturated in his goodness. That we've been saturated in his provision. That we've been saturated with his peace. This is where we live from. You understand that? We live from this place. A lot of us are living from our experiences already. We're living from the hurts that we've had in the past. We don't never want nobody to say a certain word to us because it triggers us. And if it triggers us, then we go back to that memory of what we had when that situation happened. So we're living from these past experiences already. We're already doing it. We just got to renew our mind to live from this place of wealth. Amen. So we know how to do it. You, you have the skill set, my brother, my sister. You've already got the skill set. It's now about putting it in the appropriate place from living from a place of lack, living from a place of traumatic experiences, living from a place of, I don't want that ever to happen to me again, to living from a place of God's goodness is flowing from me. That God's goodness is exuding from me. That his provision shows up every single time. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. We got to remind ourselves of these things. And we got to renew our mind to these things. Because the devil ain't playing fair. He ain't playing fair. Amen. He ain't playing fair. So we can't have no fair deal with the devil. We got to stand our ground on what God has spoken in his word. He has brought us 
into a wealthy place. He has brought us. Think about it. Think about it. now. I know we're reading the Old Testament. He has brought us into a wealthy place. But let's go ahead and bring it right here into the New Testament. We know that when Jesus came and when he died on the cross, that he was a complete fulfillment of the law that he fulfilled. That means that he had, he had every check mark, every box that needed to be checked. Jesus checked it. Hallelujah. Jesus checked every box that could be checked. He did everything that needed to be done for us to be able to live the godly life that our Father God wanted us to live all the time. Amen. Jesus came and he checked every box. Amen. The ultimate sacrifice, check. Amen. Blood shed for sin, check. Amen. Redemption from the curse, check. Amen. Place now into a new relationship with God. Check. Amen. Now he is our righteousness. Check. Amen. We have now been placed in him. Uh, I love the way Elder Rodney said it on this past Sunday. He said, our life is hid in Christ. Amen. Our life is hid in Christ. So this place of blessing, this place of wealth, oh my God, it's already in Christ. And we are in Christ. Amen. We are in him. So you might be distracted by the term wealthy place because you are so deep and so spiritual that you just, I, I just don't want to, I don't want to be distracted by that. I don't want to, no, no, let's, let's be distracted by this and understand that God has already made a way. He's already built wealth into Christ. My God, the scriptures say if he if he gave his son for us, if he gave his son for us, how will he not also freely give us all things? All things. I mean, that, that means how dare we compare healing to the gift of Christ? As if to say, well, God, you're not going to heal me because I did this, that, and the other. So we're, we're literally throwing that against the cross of Christ as if that can compete with what Jesus did on the cross to say, well, my sin it was not taken care of on the cross, so I've got to bear this sickness. I've got to bear this pain. No, Jesus bore it. Amen. He bore our sickness on the cross. He carried the shame. Hallelujah. He took it all on himself. He took it all on himself. So there's nothing that you can feel, nothing that you think you can do, nothing that you think you can be that is going to knock him out of what he's already done. You ain't doing nothing new. Amen. We're not doing anything new when we think we're, we're doing something so fantastic by letting our mistakes be something we hold up to say, oh, well, God, I can't, I, I just can't be blessed because I did this. God, I, God, I, I can't live a, a blessed life because I did this. God, God, you can't use me because I, I did this. We're putting that thing before God to act like that's more than Jesus. He gave his son. Jesus came, paid the price so that we could live in a wealthy place. He came, died, rose again so that we could live from a place of wealth. So that we can live from a place. And this is what it really boils down to understanding. Is that it's a place of us recognizing what we have been given through the gift of Jesus Christ. Recognizing what we have been given is the fulfillment of what God wants to happen 
in our lives, recognizing instead of putting other things in place. But we're recognizing, wait a minute, I am living from a place of wealth. I am living from a wealthy place. My sins have been washed away. Hallelujah. I've been redeemed by the blood of the lamb. I now am in a right relationship with God. Surely goodness and mercy follows me all the days of my life. I am now abundantly provided for because of what Jesus did on the cross. My body is healed because of what Jesus did on the cross. I've got peace in my mind, in my soul, because of what Jesus did on the cross, that I'm not a victim, that I am a victor because of what Jesus did on the cross, that this is our place of wealth, saints. This is our place of where we live and we allow God's goodness to flow from us digging in to what Jesus has done for us. This is how we are to live our lives from that place of recognizing it is no longer I, hallelujah, but it's Christ that lives in me. And the life that we now live, we live in accordance with his will. We live in accordance with his purpose. We live in accordance with his plan. That's living from a wealthy place. That's living from your place of wealth. Amen. Because if you get it in your spirit, it's going to show up in your natural. If you get it in your spirit, the more we get this in our spirit, the more it's going to show up in our natural. Amen. A lot of times we're experiencing what's in us. Lack, disappointment. Oh, nobody likes me. Nobody cares about me. All those things, we protrude them out of us. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Guard your heart for out of it flow the issues of life. Guard your heart. So you have to guard your heart because that's where the issues are are coming from. You think nobody likes you. You think nobody cares about you. You think you can never rise above the situation. That's what you got to guard. You got to come back off of that. Get off of that. Let that go. Amen. And get yourself into the word of God and begin to think about what God has already said about you. Amen. Begin to meditate on what God has already promised. Begin to receive what he has already done. We fighting the wrong thing. <laughs> you know, we fighting what God has done. Oh God, you, you, no God, you, you can't heal me. No, you, you can't heal me. You know, we're not saying God, you can't heal me, but we're thinking I can't be healed because I did this. We're thinking it. I can't be prosperous because I was raised this way. We're thinking I can't be in a good relationship because every relationship I've ever had has been broken. We think that way. And that's where we have to renew our mind. Amen. And come from your place. I'm telling you, you've got a wealthy place. Oh, you have a wealthy place. No, no, you have a wealthy place. Not you're getting not you're going to have, you have a wealthy place and you have it right now. It's available to you right now. All you got to do is take up residence. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. That is a wealthy place. You're living in the secret place of the Most 
high. You are not suffering lack. You are not suffering sickness. You are not suffering disappointment. You are dealing with things of this world, but you're not suffering those things from a place of, oh, woe is me. No, you are an overcomer. Amen. And overcomers overcome. Amen. We overcome. As we said Sunday, we overcome by the blood of the lamb, the word of our testimony. Amen. That's how we overcome. Amen. So we're not just victims of what keeps happening in our life. No, our stance is of what God has done. That's our circle that we stand in. God, you've done some things. So I'm going to stay right here. This is my wealthy place. My wealthy place is what you have done. My wealthy place is how you've already provided. My wealthy place is that you've healed me. My wealthy place is that you've delivered me. My wealthy place is that you provided for me. My wealthy place is that I have peace. My wealthy place is that I have overcome. My wealthy place is that I am victorious. My wealthy place is that I have more than enough. That's my wealthy place. So I'm going to live right there in my wealthy place. Oh, you can knock on the door, Lack, if you want to but you're not getting in because this is my wealthy place. You can knock on the door sickness, but you're not getting in because this is my wealthy place. I am shielded and protected when I'm in my wealthy place. Come on now. I pray that you receive that in your spirit right now because that's what God wants to get to us this evening. Your wealthy place. Your wealthy place. My wealthy place. Amen. It's because it's individual. Amen. We each have a wealthy place that God has given us. Hallelujah. He's already given. You don't have to beg for it. Come on now. I'm going to say that again. You don't have to beg for it. You do not have to beg for it. It's already yours. It's already mine. It's already been done. I just need to renew my mind. <laughs> I just need to renew my mind into it. I need to renew my mind into it. It's something I, you know, the story about people being on cruise ships and all. And when you go on a cruise ship, everything is taken care of on that ship. Think about that. If you've never been on a cruise, I encourage you. It's a wonderful experience. But everything is taken care of on that ship. The food. The taking care of, it's all taken care of. It's all included in the price that was paid to get on. It's already included. So now if you went on the ship and you tried to go up to the restaurant and give them some money for a hamburger, they're not going to take it because it's already included in the ship. What you've already paid, it's already included. I'm hoping that that brings an illustration of the wealthy place that you are living in, that everything you need, the scriptures say, we have been given everything that we need to live godly lives. Amen. Let me tell you something. Godly lives is not just shaka broko basita, and it is that. Amen. But it's also every need met. A godly life is being able to pay your bills. A godly life is being able to take care of your responsibilities. A godly life is being able to handle the areas that you've been given authority over. A godly life is being able to love your family. A godly life is being able to demonstrate love to one another. That's a godly life. It's not just coming to church on Sundays and, and raising our hands and saying hallelujah. That's good too. But it's not just that. Remember we said at the beginning it's and also. It's and also. God is fixing some things right now. I know he's fixing some things in me, so I know he's fixing some things in our body of Christ. He's fixing some things that we are able to live godly and successful lives incorporating all that he has done. Hallelujah. From a place of understanding that this is mine, that it's been given to me. That the price has been paid. Now I just need to receive it and I need to walk it out and I need to know that it belongs to me. That's a, that's a shifting right there. 
because lack has a way of trapping you. Lack has a way of paralyzing you. Lack has a way of keeping you confined to a certain way of doing things. So now we're breaking out of that in the name of Jesus, and we're blowing into this place of the wealthy place. The wealthy place. The wealthy place says, you need prayer? We can pray. We can pray right now. Amen. You need something, a need met? Okay, I can bless you with that. I can help you get that done right now. That's a wealthy place. Amen. You're able to flow in what God has given you at all times. And not be the one to turn it around and say, oh, you need that? Oh, well, you know, I need, oh, yeah, you know, I need this too. Oh, yeah, well, you know, you done took over that person's request with your own <laughs> request. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, child, I was, you think you need that? Oh, that, I'm, I'm telling you, I was dealing with the same thing yesterday. Yeah, I need it myself. Yeah, when you get yours and you give me some of what you, you know, no. Let's be able to flow from a place of the wealthy place where we're able to minister to the needs of others. We're able to be a blessing to others. You got to speak it and you got to talk about it before you see it. You got to think about it. You got to get it in your spirit before you see it. So don't knock yourself out because you don't see it in your life. Receive it. Amen. And let's walk in the higher levels of this wealthy place. Let's walk in the deeper places of this wealthy place where God reveals some things to us and how to get things done, how to move in this direction, how to cause healing to take place over here, how to cause deliverance to take place over here, how to meet a need over there. Let's get into that wealthy place. Let's function from that place of our wealthiness. Let's do that in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Father, right now, thank you for this time this evening. Oh God, I pray right now that your word has found a place in the hearts of your people, God, I thank you right now that deliverance is taking place in the name of Jesus. Ah, go deliverance, deliverance. That's a special word right now. Deliverance is taking place right now in the name of Jesus. There's habits that are falling off right now, bad habits that are falling off right now in the name of Jesus. And the Lord says that those you won't ever have to deal with again. They go in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There's deliverance. There's deliverance. There's deliverance in the name of Jesus for your glory, for your glory, for your glory. Hallelujah. Father, thank you right now for healing virtue flowing to everybody that needs healing in the name of Jesus from the top of head to the soles of feet, Father, in the name of Jesus, that your healing virtue is flowing, that healing is indeed the children's bread and that you have healed us by your stripes. The stripes that you took on your body bore every sickness and disease. So we thank you for healing virtue flowing in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Nothing is too hard for you. Nothing, nothing, cancer, not too hard for you. Your name is above it, hallelujah. The name of Jesus is above cancer. The name of Jesus is above high blood pressure. The name of Jesus is above kidney disease. The name of Jesus is above diabetes. The name of Jesus is above stroke. The name of Jesus is above any type of diabolical element that would attach itself to your body. The name of Jesus is above it. So we thank you, Father, for healing in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Open blinded eyes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just heard the Spirit of God saying that some vision is being cleared up. Vision, vision in the in the natural. Your vision is being cleared up. There, there's been some trouble with vision, and that's just not just wearing glasses and all. It could be that, but there's been some trouble with vision, and God is saying that vision is clearing up in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Holy Spirit. 
Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. Father, we thank you right now for every need being met. We thank you that you're the God who supplies. You said that you have the grace that causes all sufficiency towards us, that we are able to abound to every good work. So, Father, thank you for every need being met in the name of Jesus. 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 In the name of Jesus, you are the need meter. <laughs> you are the need meter. And we thank you, Father, for every need being met. In the name of Jesus, we thank you for loved ones being brought into the kingdom from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Those loved ones that we pray over, that we love, that we care about, Father. We thank you that their souls are being brought into the kingdom. In the name of Jesus, Father, your word declares that you're not willing that any perish, but that all come to repentance. So we thank you for it now, Father. Souls being saved. In the name of Jesus, from the north, the south, the east, and the west, that laborers are crossing their paths, Father, planting the seeds of life, planting the seeds of hope. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you. You're the mind regulator. <laughs> you are the mind regulator. You are the mind regulator. You are. So thank you, Father, for peace, peace in the minds, peace in the name of Jesus. Nothing missing, nothing broken. We thank you for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. We know God's word is true. Amen. His word accomplishes what he has sent it to do. It does not return void. It does not. It accomplishes what he has sent it to do. So his word has been spoken. His word has been declared. His word has been sent. And you know what? The angels are hearkening unto the voice of the word of God. That means when you declare by the stripes of Jesus, the angels are going, what? What? They said something about the stripes of Jesus. Well, they said, oh, they declare the word. Oh, let's minister that. They're ministry spirits for us. Amen. They minister to us. Amen. So they're ministers. So they're hearkening to the voice of the word of God on our lips. So speak it and watch angels go into action. Amen. So they've been released right now because they're following through on the word of God. They're following through. They ain't got no emotions. They don't care about no emotions about it. It ain't about, oh, I don't feel like hearkening to the voice of the word of God today. No, it ain't about that. That's their assignment. That's their assignment. That's what they've been created to do. So they're hearkening. So don't you worry about it. Just know that God's got it. He's got it taken care of. Amen. Praise God. Well, I'm grateful for you being here this evening to share in the word of God. My God. Woo. If you desire to give, you can give me a cash app, a dollar sign, MT Ministries. Oh, glory to God. You can give me a PayPal at info at mothertuckerministries.org. You can give online at www.mothertuckerministries.org. Amen. You can give, um, mail it in the P.O. Box 773, Tulsa, Oklahoma, 74101. And of course, if you're in the area, you can come on by 4505 West 55th Place in Tulsa. Amen. Sunday school happening Sunday mornings, 10 a.m. Again, appreciate uh, anyone does anything with Sunday school. Appreciate, appreciate. Amen. Morning worship at 1130. Appreciate Pastor Regina doing a phenomenal, phenomenal job. Just appreciate the grace of God on her life. Amen. So we thank God for what he's doing by his spirit. Food ministry is taking place Tuesday, um, excuse me, Thursday evenings from 7 to 8 30 amen then immediately following service on sunday evenings glory to god we thank god for what's happening on sunday evenings amen again appreciate uh brother floyd and his ministry there elder Apollos, on the sunday evening flow as well and what god is doing there amen god is doing some great things where we are glad amen he is faithful to his word 
Amen. Well, God bless you this evening. So grateful that you were able to plug in this evening in this time of study. Just want to send some shout outs to you as well. For those that jumped on, amen. Uh, Ambassador uh, Jan, God bless you. Woman of God, love you so much. Appreciate you so much. Amen. Appreciate uh, Administrator Diana as well. Praise God. Praise God. Good to see you on. Administrator Diane, amen. Glory to God. Did I say 4505, 4501 West 55th place? Thank you, Diana. Praise God. Appreciate you. Amen. Sister Diana Belfort, God bless you. Woman of God, appreciate you. Amen. Praise God. Sister Sparkle, I'm not sure if you're still on, but God bless you, Sister Sparkle. This is y'all. Um, you know, I was at service on this past Sunday, first Sunday of the bomb, not only for the service part, but for the food part. So Sister Sparkle, Sister Christina, and uh, just some different ones brought different things, but it was just wonderful. Just appreciate the labor of love and what God is doing. Amen. Sister Sparkle, appreciate your ministry. Amen. Praise God. And thank God for um, Sister Rachel Chang. God bless you, Sister Rachel. Sister, And then Sister Rachel Cagron, God bless you, women of God. It was good to see you this past Sunday as well. Continue to lift you and your son up as well. God is good. Our niece, Dianita. Dianita. God bless you, precious niece. Not sure if you're still on, but God bless you. Good to see you named there. Anybody else that came through, a blessed bet. My sister BJ, not sure if she's still on or not, but God bless you. Amen, sister Charlotte. Amen, God bless you. Anyone that came through for a moment or stuck out for the whole time, God bless you. God bless you. So peace and love be multiplied. Put some like there and love to show that you're friendly. We'll see you next time in Jesus' name. God bless you.